Number 46, Engineering Application. A suspension bridge oscillates with an effective force constant of 1 times 10 to the 8 newtons per meter, letter A. How much energy is needed to make it oscillate with an amplitude of 0.1 meters? All right, so it's asking for energy. We're talking about uh, amplitudes of oscillations. So we know we can basically use the potential energy formula uh, of a spring. And that's going to be the, that the potential energy of a spring is going to be equal to 1 half one half k x squared, right? Spring constant multiplied then by the displacement from equilibrium, aka the amplitude. So to find part A, it's very simple. It's simply just a plug and chug. So the force constant here is going to be one times 10 to the eight newtons per meter. Those are the correct units. The displacement from equilibrium, which is known as the amplitude is 0.1 meters. That's in the correct unit, that's squared. So all we now have to do is basically just calculate this, right? So 0.1 squared is going to be 0 0.01, right? And that's basically like 1 times 10 to the minus 2. So that's then going to multiply by this, and that total would be then 1 times 10 to the 6th. And then you're going to take half of that, right? So 1 times 10 to the 6th is going to be 1 million. And half of that's going to be 500,000. In other words, 5.00 times 10 to the 5th joules. Now that was a very long-winded explanation. Just plug it into the calculator. So, now, letter B. Letter B now says, if soldiers march across a bridge with a cadence equal to the bridge's natural frequency, and in part, 1 times 10 to the 4th joules of energy each second, how long does it take for the bridge's oscillations to go from 0.1 meters to 0.5 meters in amplitude? So basically, if the amplitude of the bridge of the bridge's oscillation is changing, that must also mean that there is a changing energy. So what I can do is I can calculate the change in energy uh, because I know the two different amplitudes and I also know the force constant. So in other words, I want to find the change in the spring potential energy, right? We can say that that's then the difference between the potential energy for the second case, whatever you call it. The second case could be the 0.5 in amplitude minus then the potential energy of the first case. And you can call that now uh, the 0.1 meter in amplitude. So expanding on each of these then, right, each of those have a formula associated, right? So it's gonna be 1 half kx squared for the second case, minus then 1 half kx squared of the first case. Now you can, anytime you calculate change in potential energy, you can kind of memorize more or less this formula here that is going to be, uh, this for a spring that is, you can pull out these constant terms, right? The one half K, if you notice, is in both. So therefore you can pull that out and it would be one half K, parenthesis then, X two squared minus X one squared. All right, what happened? There we go. And now all you need to do is basically just plug in the values, right? So it's gonna be one half, the spring constant was five times, no, just kidding, are you paying attention? 1 times 10 to the 8, multiplied then by the 0.5 squared, 0 0.5 squared, minus then the 0 0.1 squared. All right, throw that on into the calculator. So 0 0.5 squared minus then 0 0.1 squared. That works out to be 0.24. Then multiply that by 1 times 10 to the 8, times 10 to the 8. Great, and then take half of that. So point multiply by, whoop. Oh, 0.5. So we get a value here <clears throat> of it being the change and then the potential, I'll put it down here, is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the, how many zeros? I'm going cross-eyed. 3, 6, 7, I guess. Sure. And that's in terms of joules. All right. Now, we had to figure out that amount of change in energy because they told us now that the uh, natural frequency is going to be 1 times 10 to the 4 joules for each second, okay? In other words, you have a value here of 1 times 10 to the 4 joules per 1 second. Now, you're able to take this kind of value and flip it, right? You can say it's 1 times 10 to the 4 joules per second. You can also say it takes 1 second for every, well, 1 times 10 to the 4 joules, right? Now, if I write it in this way, notice how I have the seconds already on the top. I'm going to do this dimensionally. 
And if I now take this changing value of the 1.2 times 10 to the 7th joules and I plug it in on the top, what do you notice happens to the units? Joules go bye-bye, and you're left with just seconds. So that's going to now give us the time, which is what they're actually asking. How long does it take? So we can take that 1.2 times 10 to the 7 divided by the 1, uh, excuse me, times 10 to the 4, and it's going to now work out to be 1,200 seconds. And that's fine. You can leave it in terms of seconds. If you wanted to convert that into minutes, right, just take the 1,200 and divide it by 60. That works out to be 20 minutes. Right, that would be one-third of an hour, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever you need the units in now, you got it from here. Thank you for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If it helps you out at all, like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. It allows us to keep producing content. And uh, it's a nice symbiotic relationship, right? One hand washes the other. How else would you wash your hands? Hmm. Take care.